Why did you write your memoir now? Um, why did I write the memoir now? It's, I think it's because when you feel ready uh, to tell the story, when you feel like you are matured enough, and also it's about me connecting, you know, with uh, the world, connecting with people who have been following me, and making sure that you know they get they get the right information, and. For me, I think it's about also reminding, you know, people for who they are, what should, what is it that they should, you know, to do if they need to embrace themselves, uh, the process of, you know, allowing yourself, you know, into the space and making sure that you have that self-love uh, you appreciate yourself, uh, you accept yourself for who you are, but then most important thing is that not forgetting that you do matter. Yes. I'm going to quote from the very first page of your book, Caster, your new memoir, The Race to Be Myself. And for people who don't know your story, you address it, as I said, right off the top, Succinctly, you say, I have what is called a difference in sex development, DSD, an umbrella term that refers to the varying genetic conditions where an embryo responds in a different way to the hormones that spark the development of internal and external sexual organs. To put it simply, on the outside, I am female. I have a vagina, but I do not have a uterus. I do not menstruate, and my body produces an elevated amount of testosterone, which gives me more typically masculine characteristics than other women such as a deeper voice and fewer curves. What was your understanding of your anatomy and DSD before the world championships in Berlin in 2009? I think um, as we all know that we all know ourselves, of course I, I could see okay, masculine, I have a deep voice that makes me a different woman which is I loved about it, I loved it. And I enjoyed it because it makes me feel special. It makes me feel great because I embrace it and I did not question it. And, but I knew obviously later in the stage, I'll have to discover myself to say, to see, you know, what kind of a woman I am, you know, what has future hold for me? Because those things as a young girl, you do discover those things, but, I have never imagined myself, you know, not having a uterus, you know, not having a velopian tube, not, you know, being able to menstruate on all those things. Um, of course, of course, I enjoy it because I don't go through that cycle. But at the end of the day, those things don't make me less a woman. And I always tell people that I know my identity. I know where I'm going from. I know who am I, you understand? I'm a woman and I'm different. I'm a woman, I'm strong. I'm a woman, I'm fast, you understand? So that's what has always you know, been for me. And I loved my differences. And what happened in Berlin? So obviously in Berlin, you get to Berlin and then you're being asked, you know, question to say, no, and you were 18. You were only 18 enough. years old. I, I should make clear. Yes. Uh, you were, you were very age, new to the international. Asked, um, you have to prove that you are a woman. I'm like, I don't need to prove to no one that, you know, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. I know I'm different. But one thing you need to know is that I have nothing to hide. You understand? Even though they have, you know, violated me, they have you know, disgraced me by just saying they've leaked those results by mistake. For me, they've done me a favor because it was a, the language for me to communicate with the, the world to say, in this world, there are women with differences. There are women with, you know, all this kind of, you know, differences in their body. But then for me, they gave me courage to say, look, I'm gonna face the world despite of them going out there telling me that, yes, she's a female, but maybe not enough, you understand? And I was like, man, 
I'm fine. I'm good. I'm not ashamed of my body. I'm not ashamed of my differences. At the end of the day, you have to know that for me, it was my purpose to educate people about these conditions. It was my purpose to educate people how to accept. It was my purpose to educate people how to appreciate. You understand? How an individual should know their worth how an individual should know how to invest in themselves. I think for me, I'll say it was meant to be. I was born for a reason and all the situations to happen, it happened for a reason. God couldn't give me, you know, this situation if I couldn't handle it. You spent years taking hormones, taking estrogen to suppress your testosterone levels. What was that experience like? It was hell. It's like, um, you know, you're digging your own hole. You dig, you know, six feet down. You just measure your own casket, you know, to go six you know, feet down. And it's one of those days where I'll say it has always been the dark. I always say to, you know, the peers, I'll say, you don't want to dig a hole that you cannot fill up. You understand? And for me, I'll say it was hell because I was never happy. Uh, I was always depressed because that's when you discover now when you're old enough to differentiate between being happy and being depressed or being just quiet and being, you know, isolating yourself from people. And I'll say it has been that, you know, problem where I'll say, yes, I was not happy. I was unhappy for the longest. And you know, being able to take that, you know, medication for the longest, not happy, depressed, you can't sleep, you always, you know, feeling the heat, you're sweating, your stomach is, you know, is always hitting you up and you eat a lot, getting panic attacks, and you're always stressed, you know, you understand? So I'll say that's hell. And I will not allow any girl to go through that because I know what is right and I know what is wrong. Those who did not want to see you competing in the women's category. Yes. What do you think motivated them? I think it's fear, being cowards. It comes with jealousy. It comes with being threatened by greatness because when you see you know, greatness in front of you. It threatens you, it scares you. And so they couldn't handle what they see. They could see this is the future, you know, of the sports. And what I realized was like, if you don't wanna make, you know, a woman face of sports, that's what you will do. You'll make them feel like they don't belong. You will question their body. You will question their gender. You will tell them they are not enough. But by doing that, you will make sure that you do things that will make them, you know, step away from the sport. Unfortunately, I was not that person. I was that person who stand for herself, who stand for what is right. But I knew that there are certain things like this medication that I will take to sacrifice myself because I still want to finish the business that I've started. Remember, I've just won a title as an 18 year old girl. And all of a sudden my career will be end. I was like, no, you're not gonna end my career now. I'm going to make sure that I go out there, repeat as much as I can, win as many medals that I can. Then when I'm enough, that's when I can walk away. And that has always carried me because I was desperate to go out there, showcase my talent, yeah. After this process of fighting for yourself, of fighting for the right to compete, the ups and downs over the last decade and a half, your whole adult life, <laughs> what kind of a emotional toll has it taken on you? Um, it took everything out of me because that stole my teenage life, you understand? I had to live like an adult. I had to live my life independently. I had to depend on myself. I had to, you know, take full responsibility 
as a teenager, more like I'm an adult, you understand? And it told, it took my freedom. It took my childhood away from me because I was still a child. You know, I'm still a teenager who's trying to figure it out, how to live life. And all of a sudden, boom, you are in the spotlight. You know, you are in the well media. You've been questioned each and every day you're on the headlines. That takes everything away from you. But what I did, I had to isolate myself from the news. I had to pause, mute everything as if I don't hear anything, as if I don't hear anything. I had to eliminate my emotions. I had to switch off the emotions because even today, I cannot tell you how I felt for that you know, 10 years because I had no feelings. I had just neutral feelings where, you know, even when I'm happy, I don't know if I'm happy. You know, when I'm sad, I didn't know when I'm sad. You understand? So nothing excited me. Nothing made me happy. Nothing made me feel like there is a reason in this world that can make someone happy. You understand? I had to switch off my emotions and live like a robot saying, you know what? The only thing that matters the most is for me to make sure that whoever that tries to come in front of me, I crush it. You're a parent now yourself. You have two oh. kids. But you write poignantly in the book about what this experience was like for your family, mm -hmm. um, and for your mom especially. Would you elaborate a little bit? Would you tell us a little yeah, bit? Yeah, of course. That? Um, I think it was a difficult uh, period for my parents to see me go through that because they could see that I am not happy, but there's nothing they can do about it because I don't speak. When they ask me, are you okay? No, I'm fine. But they know deep down their hearts that, look, there's no way that a human can be fine by this, you understand? But they need to understand that I learned through them to be responsible, to be independent, not to depend on anyone, you know, not to accept any defeat. They taught me through the love that they gave to me. They made sure that I'm happy each and every day. So for me, as a kid, I had to take that and use it to succeed. I had to take that, use it as a tool because I knew that there are people out there that love me, there are people out there that accept me for who I am. So why should I worry about what 2% in the world think of me? Why can't I just carry that 98% with me to say, look, I'm proud to be Casta. I am strong, I'm a woman that is different. I love myself. I love how I walk. I know I dress more like a guy. That's 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 a thing about life. If you're going to live life based on others, it becomes a problem. But then if you're gonna live life based on the support, love that you get from your loved ones, love, life becomes beautiful. And for me, that's what my mom did for me. That's what my parents did for me. What do your Olympic gold medals mean to you, Castor? Olympic gold medal? For me, it's hard to explain that because I remember all through my career, nothing made me happy. You understand? So gold medal to me, I'll say it was just a token of appreciation to my people for being there for me, for believing in me. But for me, it was something that defines my greatness, that defines my success, that defines the resilience in me to showcase my talent regardless of what. Because for me, all medals I had to win. I won all medals under scrutiny. So for me, I was doing for the haters. I was not doing it for me. 
I was mm. doing it for those people who criticized me to say, now she's not woman enough. I say, I'm going to show you. If you're trying to drag me down, I'm going to win for you so you talk more. You understand? I have never done anything for me because the only time that I'll say I've done everything for, for myself, that's when I was 16, 17, because it was my joy. It was all the feelings wanting to win because I just want to be, I just want to win. I'm a kid. But now when I'm old enough to say I want to win and then enjoy my success, you don't enjoy your success because you do it to prove to people. You do it to stop them. You do it to slam them. So my gold medals, I'll say it was for them haters. Mm. So they can keep hating. But then when they keep hating, they build me. They make me the greatest I am today. Because if you look at 800 meter women, I'm number one. And you look at our generation, I'm the greatest of our generation. If maybe I wasn't questioned, probably I could have not won all these you know, medals. I could have not done all these great things. What I'm trying to say is that the gold medals were the them haters, not for me. Mm. What is your message now, Castor? When you're 32, you haven't been able to compete in your signature event, the 800 meters yeah. in years now. What is your message to World Athletics, to Lord Coe, who runs World Athletics, Sebastian Coe, who, like yourself, mm -hmm. an Olympic champion, 1500 meter runner, an 800 meter runner like yourself. What, what is your message to the people who, who haven't let you do what you are so great at? My message is very simple. They must get a life. They must grow up. You understand? They must go out there, start respecting humans. They must go out there, accept people. And you know why I say that? Because I know they don't accept themselves. I know they don't know themselves because if you know yourself, you can't treat people with disrespect. You can't treat people, you know, like the animals. So my message is very simple. Treat people with respect. As much as you are the leader, act in the best interest of athletes. Stop discriminating stop being a racist, stop segregating people because of what you are doing now, you're segregating women because of the discriminatory ruling that you are putting in place. So that's what I can say to these people. So for me, if you think you are doing it to spite me, you're not. You're building me, you're guiding me, you're making me the best version of myself. So I'll say they must just go find themselves. This is personal. When Sebastian Coe says the most important issue, the most important thing right now in world athletics is protecting, defending the women's category, mm -hmm. drawing lines there. As you write about, what, what do you think when you hear that? What, what women, what prote protecting which women? Why is it that important to him to protect women and if is that so women's category or women's sports is important to him why is he why is he a president of IAAF why is he not putting someone female next to him why is women does not have authority to decide what's right and what's wrong for women why does he think IWF office is his house. We're talking about people's lives here. We're talking about other people's careers here. So if is that important, then he should stop regulating women's sports. He should allow women to regulate their own sports. He is a man. He must go deal with men's issues and let women deal with women's issues. We talk genetics here. We talk about people who are born with gifts 
we are born with differences. That's why even in men's sports, you'll find other men are tall, other men have got these fiber muscles that you know they gain advantage on others. So if it's that so, you're saying you want to level the, the, the play, you want to categorize women. Why is it that important? Because I have never found any reason for women's sports to be categorized. You can't tell me because of a woman is born with no uterus, uh, with high testosterone, you're gonna tell me that uh, that woman is not woman enough, does not deserve a chance. That's where stupidity comes. That's where a fool separates himself from great people. So if he wants to level sports, he must separate himself from women's sports and let women leaders in sports decide if they want to regulate sports. Simple, period, as that. Castro Semenya, the two-time Olympic gold medalist. Her new memoir is The Race to Be Myself. Castro, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your time.